Idaho. The state mentioned in the news about as often as, well, something you've never heard of. As long as the potatoes keep on flowing, most people aren't too concerned with what they do over there. So why are we talking about Idaho today? Did we just run out of news? Nope, there's a fight going on in that state right now that has ramifications on the future of the Affordable Care Act. Big news out of the Idaho State House as Governor Butch Otter and Lieutenant Governor Brad Little sign an executive order creating a new health care system in Idaho. The state regulated plans fall outside the Affordable Care Act requirements, but the leaders say it will be a cost effective option for Idahoans. It's a cost effective alternative in the same way that dying is a surefire way to save money on the cost of living expenses. Many people view Idaho as violating the crucial rules set up by the Affordable Care Act. So first, what ACA rules is Idaho violating? Well, all of them. Idaho says that in their state, insurers will now be able to charge the sick more for benefits, limit benefits, and impose payment caps. Republicans, you've wasted all this time trying to repeal Obamacare when it turns out you could have just been ignoring it. Um, okay, so what's the plan here? Are we going to let the FBI in there to arrest the state? Something about its shape leads me to believe that it would be pretty hard to cuff. So seriously, what is the federal government going to do? Well, to understand that, we need to go back to 1997 and a very controversial Supreme Court ruling. Background checks for handguns, and the Supreme Court says the Brady Bill is unconstitutional. Can't we have a conversation that doesn't go back to guns? Anyways, why was this act that mandated background checks for handguns, in this case, found to be unconstitutional? Now, most of you probably assume, oh, it's the Second Amendment, because gun rights activists cite that like it's scripture. But in this case, Prince vs. United States, it was ruled unconstitutional based on the Tenth Amendment. This amendment, as interpreted by Prince vs. the United States, says that the federal government can't direct state officials to enforce federal laws. Now, that might sound like checkmate, and trust me, if it was that simple, Texas would have cracked that code about eight years ago. Nope, instead, enforcement of the Affordable Care Act is left up to the Department of Health and Human Services. But guess who has two thumbs and hates Obamacare? Well, I would have said it's Trump's HHS Secretary Tom Price, but apparently when it came to footing the bill for all of his private planes, the price was just too high. Let me tell you who really hates Obamacare, though. The new Health and Human Services Secretary, Alex Azar. So this brings us to a whole new ballgame, because the question on everyone's mind is, will Secretary Azar enforce Obamacare regulations? Well, breaking news because Secretary Azar has said that he would defend the Affordable Care Act if Idaho is found to be violating federal laws. Yes, to put this into perspective, the concept of a secretary of a major group enforcing on-the-book laws that he is required to enforce should not be breaking news. But his acceptance of his legal obligation is still being heralded as a major victory for Obamacare people. That said, this entire situation is crazy with the Blue Cross of Idaho saying they plan on releasing a plan that violates Obamacare requirements in April. Over a month ago, Idaho sent a memo to insurers in their state saying that they didn't have to follow Obamacare precautions for sick and elderly people any longer. Most people heard this and thought, okay great, no one's actually going to start selling policies that are illegal under federal law because apparently they had slept through the entire marijuana and sanctuary cities debate. But the Blue Shield Blue Cross stepped up and announced that they would start releasing non-compliant plans. Oh man, that must be one heck of a sell. So you're saying this plan isn't regulated by the federal government? No, it's illegal, but don't worry, just sign here. Anyways, this might sound terrible for healthcare advocates, but don't worry. It's just bad. Idaho hasn't full-on record-scratched healthcare progress just yet. Because their healthcare laws announced that insurance companies that sell non-compliant plans must also sell half-compliant plans. Now I'm going to explain this situation using jelly beans, and I promise that it will go better than using Skittles to explain the Syrian refugees. Yes, I think we all learned a lot from the nuance that that example provided. 
So I'm using jelly beans in this example based on the fundamental truth that some beans are just better than others. I mean, you got the licorice one and that weird splotchy yellow one, you can keep it. But I keep dipping my hand into the jar for the promise of cherry and blueberry. So what does any of this have to do with healthcare? Well, what the Affordable Care Act did was essentially make insurers have to cover both older people and people with pre-existing conditions, the licorice and splotchy beans, as well as the young and healthy people, your cherry and blueberry jelly beans. It made this affordable by putting an individual mandate, ensuring that the cherry and blueberry beans can't go off and leave insurers with a jar of terrible flavors. You see, if you're an insurer who, by definition, gives money to the sick and injured, and you only work to heal people who are prone to sickness and injury, you're either a terrible businessman or Jesus Christ. It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. I don't know, Lord, that sounds a lot like pre-existing conditions. I can't imagine the copay on having the Son of God wave his hand over your head is too high though, but with the price of drugs going the way they are, who knows? Anyways, jelly beans. So we have the Affordable Care Act marketplace, where all flavors are mixing into one plan. But now, let's see what Idaho did. Well, their Blue Cross plans that will cut out some in April separate the jelly beans into desired groups and undesired groups. And because there are a limited number of beans, the now separated out desired flavors will be very in demand and receive favorable terms, while the also separated beans that taste like they were designed for a jigsaw trap will, now that they aren't lumped together with the more favorable group, be able to be targeted with much worse plans because it's clear that they will be much more expensive. And if you don't think this metaphor can get any deeper, the president um, apparently loves the pink and red Starburst. Only. Only. He, he got his staff to buy a bunch of Starburst. <laughs> yeah, very good. And, and some poor dude's them. job was to surf through them to take out everything except pink and red. See, you really can learn a lot from candy. Now, I think this is important to understand because if you're a cherry or a blueberry youthful jelly bean, you will probably benefit from this plan. But if you're not, then maybe consider moving. So anyways, considering this story has been slowly unrolling for months, what is going on? Well, the federal government has a fine system designed for these plans in which they can fine any company that sells illegal insurance. These companies can be fined up to $100 per day per person they're selling insurance to, and that adds up fast. So look out all you mob capos who have been selling fire insurance for the past few decades. The question here is, what can we do if the federal government, specifically the HHS department, continues to not enforce the law? Well, some propose suing the HHS, but, hmm, I wonder what the Supreme Court has to say about that. According to 1985's Heckler v. Cheney, the courts can't review a federal agency's refusal to enforce the law. Seriously, Supreme Court, you know I love you, but we need to talk. This is getting ridiculous. So again, what's a pro-affordable care act person to do? Well, this is where things get interesting because there are really two methods. First, you could sue the Idaho Department of Insurance when they finally decide to issue this illegal insurance. Now you might be thinking, but Stephen, what about Prince vs. United States, the case we talked about earlier? Well, interestingly enough, Idaho state law requires that state agencies follow federal law when they make decisions. On your own petard, you have been hoisted. Now, in a move about as constitutional as welcoming another British invasion, in mid-February, an Idaho subcommittee voted to approve legislation that would make it so federal laws and Supreme Court decisions didn't apply to Idaho, although it went to vote in the House and lost by an intimidatingly narrow margin. That said, what do you even do in that case? Clearly it's not constitutional, but if they say the constitution doesn't apply, then what? Well, I guess it the entity with the bigger guns decides. So anyways, Idaho. Because of state laws, it is still liable to US laws. Now the other option is to sue the Blue Cross because of their new freedom plans, implementing illegal caps on insurance plans. 
Come on, you can't just slap freedom in front of something terrible to make it patriotic. Change our french fries to freedom fries. The official breakfast menu aboard Air Force One included stuffed freedom toast topped with strawberries. Okay, I stand corrected. The main problem here is that we're gonna have to wait until someone requires more than one million dollars in insurance covered medical fees before this happens. And despite the fact that some drugs are going up 5,000% in price, that might still take a while. And in the interim, other states could be following suit. So what's gonna happen? Well, no one knows, which isn't too reassuring. I'm just surprised this hasn't happened earlier. Anyways, until we see what the federal government chooses to do about all of this, thank you, and that's hopefully not all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of That's All I Have To Say About That, click here. And please click here to subscribe and remember to like below.